Reach new heights of calm, focus, and happiness here on Mindfulness Mode with me, your host and Mindfulness Life Coach, Bruce Langford. Hey, Mindful Tribe, I've got one of my mentors with me today. This is so fantastic. I've got Dan Locke. Hey, Dan, are you in Mindfulness Mode today? Uh, absolutely, Bruce. I'm glad to connect. What took you so long to reach out? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, man, I'm sure glad it's happening today. This is so awesome. Yeah, I was just saying to Dan that I have listened to him hundreds of times because he was interviewed way back in like about 2005 on Raymond Aaron's show. And Dan, that was that was just so awesome because you were such a warrior, you know, such, a, you know, get out and do something and don't let those voices stop you you know just do it do it do it do it and man that has inspired me to do so many things that i've done in my life so so dan tell us what mindfulness means to you what's it all about in your life i think mindfulness to me is self-awareness right i think most people they they don't have enough self-awareness and i get these questions a lot like you know dan what should i do should i start the business should i change career or or should i do this or what direction what decision should i should i make uh very often it boils down to lack of self-awareness because for most people they are not they don't know what what they are their callings are i'm not even talking about like your your life purpose because that's way deeper i'm just talking about knowing yourself enough what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses, right? What are you good at? What are you not good at, right? What are you passionate about? What are you not passionate about? That's, to me, uh, the, the, anything that you want to do, if you have that self-awareness, everything is so much easier that you will have that clarity, right? Part of it is that clarity, uh, what, what, where you want to go. So uh, to me, it equals self-awareness. Well, you know, you seem to have that ability to just move forward, move forward, move forward. Have you ever been blocked? Like, have you ever been at a place where you just thought, man, I don't know how to move forward? Uh, all the time. Oh, yeah? <laughs> really? All the freaking time. Okay. <laughs> uh, all the time because uh, every level is another devil right? Yeah. Uh, where you get to a certain point, like it's think about it in the beginning, let's say from a, from, from a business perspective, yeah. you got nothing to lose, right? Like you're starting a company, you got nothing to lose. You kind of a startup mode and you make mistakes, you, you lose some sales, you make some sales. It's okay. You got nothing to lose. But once you build up to a certain point, like say this point, now you you have something to lose, not a huge, but something to lose. Now it's not just you and you've got a team, you've got your competitors. Now, if you have something that's working, you're bound to have competitors, right? And then from there, and then now when you become even now more successful, now it's like, like we you have a problem. It's a good problem to have. Like before, if you're here, there's a lot of people you can learn from, right? Totally. A lot of people you can learn from. But when you're here, now everybody's copying you. You look at the front. It's like, hey, there's no one in the front I can learn from. Like most of it behind me, right? So yeah. now you need to innovate. You need to do so much more. So blocks in front of me like all, all the time. But I think one difference is, comes back to self-awareness. Uh, example, when we are growing as a company, now we have like students as a global education company in over now 150 countries. That's incredible. A hun- I'm not talking about podcasts. I'm not talking about reach. That's way more. I'm talking about students, actual students. Wow. 150 countries. So when you're running a global organization like this, that it requires me, like there is problem after problem, always in business, in life as well. Any problem that you solve will be immediately replaced by another problem. Bigger problem. Yeah. Right? It's not like you get to a point where you've got no problem. So when you're talking about like Bruce, this block all the time. But the block, it is not, I'm not talking about people who have this invisible war, war where they have this, like they're stuck and they, this, this wall in front of them where they, they don't know how to break through that, right? Yes. Mine is a little bit different. Mine is like, I'm growing, I'm improving. I know I can see the wall, right? I know it's getting closer. So let's make sure what do we need to do? Do we need to break through it? Do we need to go around it? Do we do go under? Like I, cause I have that self-awareness. I can think long enough, far enough that I could see that it's coming, it's coming versus like this invisible wall. To me, it's very, very visible. It's a block, but I could work around it. So that's the way that I see it. But all the time, all the time. 
Yeah, well, speaking of blocks and challenges, you were 14 when you came to Canada from Hong Correct. Kong. Correct. Tell me about the emotion. Tell me how that felt when you you arrived in Canada, you were 14, you didn't speak English very well. How did that feel? Uh, loneliness. Yeah. Uh, frustration. Uh, resentment. Resentment towards my parents right. because I was like, why do you... Like I was okay. I felt I was okay. Uh, why did you take me out of like all my friends that I had, all that, like all the, everybody from like that to this country and where I couldn't speak the language. Like Bruce, the first time when the first few days when I w arrived to, to Canada, I was living in Surrey, right? Right. Now, for those who don't know, we're Canadians, so you, you probably know. Like Surrey is kind of hood, you know, the hood right. in, in Vancouver. Right. Yes. It's not. And, and I was living in Wally. Right. Okay. That's like the worst part of, of Vancouver, pretty much. Right. Yes. Um, and so your was, dad was back in Hong Kong, right? My dad was back in Hong Kong. So it's just my mom and I, we were living in a one bedroom apartment. Right. Yeah. So the first few days when I arrived, I was so afraid, so afraid of just like, what is this place? I couldn't speak the language. So I didn't go to the house for days. I didn't mm. even go out of the house for days. And finally, I had worked up enough courage. I would go out there and like kind of walk around. Like I'm talking like a small little one block maybe. Right. Wrong. And then back my home. And there was it took me like a while before I can walk like a big block, right? Wow. From go to it's kind of what I was so afraid. I, I didn't know. Like I was afraid to talk to people. I was afraid people would talk to me. What I, what am I gonna say? So I was this like shy, like just kid who who's so afraid of the world. So and and then when I when I was going to high school, right, in that school, it was a school in Surrey. Right. I was one of the only three Chinese in my school, right? Wow. So from there, I got bullied. I got beat up. When you went through a lot of, because I never had this kind of stuff happen in my life, you kind of traumatized by it. When you go to school, you get beat yeah. up, right? Yeah. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but this, like, I've got a scar. That's from my, from beat up, right? From gut beating up. Right, right under your chin. Right under my chin right here, right? Yeah. Um, and so, tell me about one of those situations, one of those days, one of those bullies. Tell me a situation. Oh, it was every week. One, okay, one day I was in my uh, in a cafeteria. Yeah, I was just eating my like the little lunchbox like my my mom made for me, right? Yeah, I was just like eating like this. Imagine, right? Yeah. So like they they have the the table here. So suddenly this kid came over. He he grabbed my hair, right, just like this, yanked, just pulled just, you back, pulled your pulled head right back. back. Say, hey, you know, just like, what's it, what? And then it's like, what? Because kisses was, why are you looking at me like this? Just telling me, like, why I look at him. I didn't look at him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's like, why are you looking at me like that? So he's like this, right? He's just like shaking me. You want to fight? I said, well, I, I don't want to fight. Like, I'm, like, kid, I'm not, like, I was a skinny little guy, right? Yeah. He's like yeah. 110 pounds, maybe. Like, you want to fight? Yeah, let's go fight, right? And it's, he's got a couple other, like, bully friends right there, right? He dragged me out from the cafeteria all the way out to the, the, the playground area, out the door, like yeah. my hair. Like it's in front of like a lot of people, right? Because it's, it's, it's lunchtime. So drag me all the way, drag me out to the, to the area where it's outdoor yeah. and just beat the crap out of me. Just beat you up just like that. Yeah, and then on the, on the ground kicking me and stuff like that. And then it's like, don't you look at me again. Like, like that way, you know? And it's got some like racist comments, right? Yeah. And he walked away and I was like, of course, I was crying and I was like yeah. you know, bruises and blood and all that. And I was so afraid because I was afraid. To, and then I went home to my mom and mom, my mom was like, oh, why are you getting into fights and stuff? And, and I, I didn't even want to, I want to explain, right? I didn't want to bother explaining. Um, I said, it's okay, don't worry about it. So like, you can imagine, so I bought up a lot of emotions, a lot of, yeah. a lot of uh, depression and, and I, like, I mean, an environment that I don't want to be in. I'm getting beat up for no reason. I couldn't speak the language. I had no friends. Like why did my parents did it did this to me, right? It's it's a lot of a lot of resentment, a lot of anger for sure. Yeah. Um, that was different if it's a very difficult time. Very difficult time. Wow. And then when was the last time you saw your dad? I know that you you got a lot of feelings about, you know, not seeing him just before he passed away, but when so, did you see him? Yeah, so it was a so just to fast forward, so my mom and dad so I was arrived to to Vancouver. Yeah. Immigrant. When I was 14, my mom and dad got divorced when I was 16. Right. So because my dad, actually, they always had uh, issues, but they, they actually waited for so long before they got divorced because of me. Right. 
otherwise my mom would have divorced like way, way, way early. Right. Um, they had this issue. And afterwards, and my dad went bankrupt about a year later when I was 17 years old in Hong Kong, right? Right. Because he trusted the wrong business partner. The business partner basically took the money and disappeared. And my dad was the guarantor for everything. Mm. So he basically left, left about a million dollars in debt in the US, a million dollars. Wow. And so that point on, my dad could no longer support us. He could no longer send us money, allowance, just even to, to eat and go to school. Right. So whatever little money that we have, we had at the time, my mom that had, that was it. Like, and my mom has never worked a day in her life. Like my mom was like a housewife and right. couldn't speak English. Like she couldn't get work. Right. So I had a lot of resentment towards my dad. First of all, the divorce, I was like, how dare you? Yes. Right. First, like from, from my point of view. And then like, what you won't even support us. What the hell is wrong with you, man? Like, right. Yeah, like really. I had a lot of resentment to like, I, Almost like to a point, like I hated him. Yeah, right. And like anger, right? Anger, anger. And I, I, from then, that 17 went bankrupt. I didn't talk to him for at least, I think, three, four years. Right. Um, and then he would, at a time, we had the fax machine at home. Yes. Like the fax machine. Yeah. He would send me like faxes like this, like yeah. always, probably once every couple of weeks. I still have all those faxes. Oh, do you? Yeah. And he would uh, apologize, always very apologetic. Uh, about different things and i didn't didn't call he, he was too guilty to call yeah so he was always just send me faxes right right um and it was like three four years later until i'm like was more mature now i'm like being an entrepreneur right all this stuff uh and then i found out a few other things about the sacrifices that my dad had made for me to get to to get to canada uh -huh. um, it's, uh, it, because here's what happens right because my dad had um heart disease blood high blood pressure and um diabetic right okay so for immigrant he actually wouldn't qualify to I immigrate see. oh he couldn't sense. have come to canada he couldn't have come to canada and at the time the, the reason why they moved is because i was getting so much trouble I, at the time i didn't know i was too like I'm, i was a punk kid right but okay. i was getting into, into fights i was um hang i was i joined a gang in hong kong right yeah because i was hanging around with the wrong people i wasn't good at school right so my dad and mom decided okay we need to get him out of the environment. So all the people I was, quote unquote, my friends, they were the wrong people I was hanging out with. I but see. I, I was a teenager. I didn't know. I, right. All I knew is I was hanging out with my friends. What the hell, man? Like, what's going on? Yeah. So my dad actually had to take a lot of the medicines and pills, you know, to qualify for the test. That's very, very harmful for his body. Okay. So he, so he actually was sacrificing his health in order for us to move here. He did a lot of things. He never told me that. Right. I found out later from another relative, right? I see. Um, and my dad was very guilty, like that, that million dollar he lost, uh, which it, it's, it's not his fault, right? Yeah. And so the more I know it, it's like all, all these things, then I realized, oh, actually my dad, like as I thought, like, oh, my dad didn't love me, right? Sure. He's like, but actually it turned out he actually loved me very, like so much, so much. Um, so afterwards we, we, we talked and, and our relationship, it's so much better. And then after a, a few years later, uh, I forgot probably when I was 20, yeah, 20 something that I went back to Hong Kong, then I saw him um, and that was, that was great. And you know, the minute I saw him, uh, I, I never see my dad cry, but he cried. Oh, wow. Cause he sees like a very traditional, like Asian, like dad, yes. like, you know, doesn't like, but he was, he was bawling like a baby. And did you <laughs> like, cry too? Oh fuck! I cry like crazy. Oh yeah, I do you? Yeah, I, I, I was but like from from like as I exited the the uh, MTR station in Hong Kong, kind of like a subway. Yeah, I was there. I was here. My I saw my dad from like quite far away. Yeah, we saw each other. We were just before we get we were bawling. He he I was bawling. He was bawling. Right. Wow. And then I ran towards him and I I hugged him and we like just two men in the middle of Hong Kong. We were just like <laughs> bawling. Right. It was it was incredible. But it's it's. It's, it's, I, it's great because then um, our relationship, we repair our relationship. Uh, and it's so funny because afterwards uh, with my dad, again, like my dad's like very like strict and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Uh, but because now I'm a lot more, more, I guess from, from Canada, more Caucasian, right? Yes. 
Yeah. Like I, I, I hug him, I kiss him and stuff. Like my dad first kind of freaked out by that was kissing him in on, on the <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's like, probably oh. like, what are you doing? Yeah, like what the hell? I'm kissing him. And then before you know it, he was kissing me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty awesome. Like that, I was it's it's very, very special. So I'm glad that we were able to we repair repair the relationship. And yeah, it's then when I went back to Canada, came back here, I call him every week and we talk and uh. It, it's really it's beautiful and and like keep in mind like my dad again doesn't say you know i love you stuff no every time we end a call i say i love you in, in chinese he said i love you son you know i'm proud of you uh, it's it's great that's oh that is an awesome story but in the meantime before you made that that connection it was more bruce lee who was playing that father figure for you wasn't correct. it like he correct, was correct. the man what were the characteristics in bruce lee that that you just admired the most that's a good question so remember i was in high school I was getting bullied right yeah yeah getting, getting my ass kicked and yeah. one day i was flipping through the the case i always remember i was sitting in the living room yeah right the TV is in the here, and yes. I was flipping through a channel. Late night cable TV, I saw Return of the Dragon. Yes. Okay, it was Bruce Lee's movie, and where he went to, he couldn't speak a word of English. Right. Went to Rome, right? And then all the peers, the restaurant, all kind of looked down on the guy, like, who is this guy, right? Yeah. And then before you know it, he's like kicking ass and like being so cool and, and kicking all the bad, bad guy's ass, right? Yeah. That was like, I was like, oh my God like that that after that movie he became oh. my hero yeah that, that was, was it just triggered something in your brain that, that that was like wow like a guy like couldn't speak english and like kick like from then on like within very short period of time like weeks and days uh i joined a karate school near my house yeah you know, like, yeah like maybe five ten minutes away so that's my first experience to like learning learning martial art and of course martial art changed my life so but bruce was the one who inspire me like to develop self-confidence uh funny thing is this bruce bruce right yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, that after i learned martial art the bully who bullied me in school yes they no longer bully me i i can believe that <sighs> yeah and you know what's even fascinating is this what some of the guys who bully me actually later on became my students cool for martial art cool it is like the most bizarre thing. That is uh, bizarre. And, and were you able to let go of the animosity? Like, were you able to just kind of like forgive them and everything? Yeah, because when, when, when you learn martial art, you learn to a lot of things like about your mind, your body, your spirit, right? Yeah. That, that like, it's not about like, oh, kicking somebody ass, ass and stuff. Like you learn about yourself, right? When you have that self-confidence. And, and I forgive them because I know the bullies, why, why, why do they bully other people? Well, yeah, because they feel inferior, right? Because they, they feel they just want to prove themselves because they have this fear. They have right. this feeling of inferiority. That's right. Because they, it's usually coming from insecurities. Yeah, for sure. They, they don't want, well, in case someone bully me, so to protect myself, I need to bully other people to show how tough I am, right? Right, right. That's So usually the bully is the coward. Exactly. Because the one who's truly confident, they don't need to bully people to prove to anybody that, oh, I'm, I'm so tough and this and that, right? Yeah. So, so from there, I actually kind of, and that's, I think, in some way, I didn't know late until later on, but even back then at such a young age, I discovered my calling, right? Where I have this teacher's heart that for martial art, oh, martial art changed my life. When what these like these bully these kids who are confused right, right. And when I can teach them some and they change you can see from like this like mean they're more polite they're more calm, and I'm like wow that's that's quite a transformation for sure right and so that back back then Bruce like my dream my biggest dream was just to be a martial art instructor, I thought I'd open up a little school sure some class like a little dojo and that was that was my like big dream if I could do that for the rest of my life right. What I didn't know is now it led me to a different path. And fast forward, like today, really, I was the same guy who, who likes to have that teacher's heart, who likes to teach, who likes to share, who likes to see people transform. It's just now in a different context, but really it's the same. Well, really yeah, and you're just crazy about teaching. You just love it so <laughs> yeah. much. It's just obvious, it, and you and you deliver so much content. Love, like, how do you it. dish out so many blogs and so many videos and so much stuff? How do you do all that? I just 
like a lot of people, I think if they, they look at it as a, oh man, I got to promote my business. I got to do branding, <laughs> right? It's like, what I, it's what I got to do, yeah. right? Yeah, what yeah. I have to do, then you don't enjoy it. No. When it's like, Bruce, tell me, tell me a hobby that you enjoy doing. Oh, a hobby? Oh, I'm a musician, so I love playing musician. music. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What what kind of uh, what what kind of instrument? Well, I play the piano. I play all okay. the instruments because I used to be a teacher in a school. But I but go. I play the piano. Yeah, you play the piano. And and how often you play? Oh, I play like every day. And I every day. and it doesn't feel right if I don't play. I want to sit down and play and just like close my eyes and it's almost like a meditation. You know, I just want to get into it. Yes, right. And after you play, how do you feel? Then I feel relaxed. I feel like, oh man, that's the best. You know, yeah, it's, it's just a great day, feeling. Right? You feel inspired. Totally. It, it's exactly like that. So I don't feel like, oh, like if I am horrible at piano, right? <laughs> I, I'm probably the worst pianist in the world. No joke. Uh, <laughs> I used to go, I used to take a class in Hong Kong, like when I was a kid. Yeah. Right. I got kicked out by the music school. <laughs> I was so, like, I was the only student that's ever been kicked out from the music school learning piano. <laughs> So I'm the worst in the world, right? Well, so that's funny. So so when I if I play piano, if I don't like enjoy, I don't like playing it. I'm like, oh man, this is so tough. I, that's not my thing, right? Right. But it is your thing. So right. when you enjoy doing it, so people ask me how do how do you create so much? How do you be be stay creative? I'm like, it's like people ask you, Bruce, how, how do you play every day? Doesn't it take discipline? Right? Don't you have to work hard? Like, how do you get inspired? How do you get good? You're like, that's what I like to do. Yeah. Well, that right? series Boss in the Bentley you did on, on YouTube, that must have been so much fun. Was that fun doing that? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's fun. It's productive, right? Yeah. yeah. It's just, I came up with the idea one day, like, okay, I'm going somewhere. Yeah. Like, I, and I don't like to use my cell phone in the car, right? Because right. I get, <laughs> so I'm like, it's like at a dead time. Why don't we do something? We think we're filming anyway. Let's turn on the camera. Let's yeah. mount the camera and let's, let's just do some Q and A. Let, sure. Let's just talk. Right. Uh, and from there, that's how that series like launched and, and how it blew up. And now we have like so many episodes, of course, but that was it. And, and then I integrate more with uh, like, people think about what I do. Uh, uh, Bruce, I'll share but that's profound. I think it's for, for your audience. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. People think about what I do. It's most influencers, most content creators, they build their life around their, like, whatever platform. Like, okay, they build a life around Facebook. They build a life around Instagram. Like, let me take that perfect photo. Or they, they, they build a life around YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm the opposite. I build these things around my life. Uh -huh. So I, I don't do things where, Oh, I just do that for, for, because it looks cool. That would be a good thing and all that. No, it just, I'm just living my life. I just turn on the camera. Okay. Since I'm driving somewhere, let's, let's do some Q and A. It wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it wasn't like, sometimes we come up with good, good, cool ideas. We want to, we want to try, but really it's like, this is like the set that you have. This is, this is my house, right? I, I have the camera, I turn on the mic and we have a conversation, right? It's, it's pretty cool. Like That's, it's not, it doesn't feel like, oh, I got to open a studio and now it's all serious and I got to, right. no, it's like, yeah, let's have a chat. Let's turn the camera. That's the only difference, right? Sure. Like, instead of you and I, just two people having a conversation, we, we just have having a conversation in front of millions of people. Like it's like, it's the same to me. Yeah. And you've, and you've written quite a few books. You've written more than 10 books and now you've got Unlock It. And, and uh, it's coming out soon, isn't it? Yeah. So we just uh, finish it. It's coming up probably, I would say, May and June. But we already, like, we have so many of, like, fans from all over the world. They're already pre-ordering it. Yeah, so the Unlock It book. It's last time I wrote, actually, a book is my last, last book, F You Money. Right, F You. Yeah, was, that, that was money. really did well, didn't it? That was more than 10 years ago. Yes. This is my, my proudest work here. Oh, is it? Yeah. This I, is my, my product because I have, I'm more mature, mm -hmm. right? I am, uh, when I wrote a few money, I was more uh, brash, right? I was more, yes, um, right? It was just more brash. Yeah, I remember guy. you very well back in those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah, you were very yeah. straight ahead, you know, just very do this, ahead. do and that. I, and, I, and I'm still very direct, don't get me wrong, but yeah. a little bit older, a little bit more mature. You're like, a little bit softer. 
a little bit soft, a little bit calm. In a good right? way. Yeah, in a good way. So it's, it's like it's like it's like it's like piano, right? You know, you yeah. learn to play it, and then it's like now you're like more calm. You, right. you know what to do. So this is what I have learned. Everything I've learned, and you see, see some fu money principles in there. However, sure, the it's like a more refined version of me, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. That's, and I put everything in the book. I yeah. told myself, like, you know what? If I'm gonna give a book, if like to to my, if I have kids, like something I want them to read, it's this. That one. Yeah, I read the first part of it. And uh, you start by talking about countries in the global economy that are crippled by debt and how Singapore is an example of one that's different. How does this relate to the debt problems of our average citizens? Mm. So you're thinking about like the, the global issue that we have. It doesn't yeah. matter U.S., even Canada has issue, of course, right? Of course, yeah. Uh, some some serious issues, actually. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. We can we can end a whole different topic uh, with the what's going on with the economy. Yeah. And the economy is changing so quick from a what I call a a job economy, yeah. where you know back then you go to school, get good grades, and you get a job, a job economy, versus now it's much more what I call a skill economy. Okay, and that's what I talk about in the book, skill economy, meaning that uh, the the idea of I'm going to find one company, I'm going to work for that company, and that company is going to take care of me, everything will be fine. That model is dead. Yes. Because first of all, the company, whoever company you're working for, that company might not exist five, 10 years from now. Right. Because of technology, because of AI, because of the changes. So that's out. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that industry might not exist. Whatever industry you're working in, that the whole industry could be gone. Exactly. Or even that company. So that that it's out. So the whole uh, secure, the whole job security, that's an illusion. It doesn't exist anymore. So now, now the the skill economy. What am I talking about? You look at Uber. Uber is not a job. It's a skill, not a high level skill, but it's a skill. Right. right? Uh, through leverage through a platform that. You and I, anyone can become an, an Uber driver and people actually make a living as an Uber driver. Yes, and they, they might have a daytime job, but they still kind of have this side income, a side hustle, right? Exactly. As an Uber driver. That's a, that's a skill set that I, that I refer to. It's a skill economy. Podcast, right? You as a podcast host, you as a coach, it is not just, it's not a job, right? It is a skill set that you have. Being right. able to connect, being able to, to interview other guests, right? Just like phenomenal mind. That's a skill set that you have. It is a skill economy. So I think with the whole global issues that anyone, students going through college, going through schools, they need to be, they need to realize, hey, just having that that piece of that certificate that doesn't guarantee you income. It doesn't guarantee you success. It doesn't guarantee you happiness. No, but for a lot of people, it guarantees a lot of debt, right? Because it can be a hundred thousand or more it, just it, to get it. You absolutely guarantee a lot of debt. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Unless your parents got a lot of money and send you to private school, that's an issue. But for most, yeah, you guarantee a slot of debt. So, I mean, you know, that even recently, the whole uh, school uh, fee, college, the whole scandal about like all these things. Yeah. Uh, how like the school, like, even you look at the, the trend, if you study numbers, we talk numbers, how wages, this is, this is the curve, right? School tuition, this is the curve, right? Yeah, that's right. Wages are staying fairly the same and tuition is skyrocketing. It's, it's like this, right? Yeah. So what used to work no, long, no longer works. And, and that's really what I talked about. That I don't believe if you have, if people now, a lot of people are in debt, if you have debt right now, you do not have a debt problem. About you, I said, you don't have a debt problem. You have an income problem. Right. Okay. When I say income problem, meaning whatever income level that you're at, this is how much money you're making. This is how much debt that you have. For most people, if it would take you a long time with the current income to pay off this debt, but what if you can increase your income by two, three, five times by becoming more valuable, right? Upgrading your skill sets, how much faster you can pay off that, that, that debt. Now, uh, ultimately, then your income problem is a skill problem, right? How can you become like Bruce? If today you can become more valuable. Uh, as as a coach, you can become more more valuable, upgrade your skill set as as a podcaster, right? Like all these skills that you have, that is going to impact your income, right? Well, it's no good to just say, "Well, I want more income." Uh, well, how come I don't make more income? But well, that doesn't <laughs> doesn't help anybody, right? No. 
But if you say, you know, I'm going to work on my skills so I can bring more value to the marketplace, so I can earn more money. Now that's a totally different story. So that problem is not that problem. It's an income problem. Income problem is not the income problem. It is a skill problem. And you're determined to help 1 billion people in the next 12 years to understand this and to move forward and to increase their income, right? Yeah. This is my life mission. This is going to be what I do for the rest of my life. Wow. And you've already helped thousands and thousands and thousands. But how do you plan to do this in 12 years to help 1 billion people? With, in my mind, uh, I don't have a time frame. I'll, I'll do it till the day. They, mm. they, 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 they put dirt on me, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I do. Uh, and so through social media, it's a great way to do it now. Like example, you like YouTube, we reach like one, we have like 1.3 million followers on YouTube, Instagram, almost 800,000, Facebook, we have 1.5, podcasts, like hundreds of thousands. So we reach a lot of people through social media. Social media is a great way to, to share my message, right? Right. And then through, our, through even our training, our education programs, where people can go through that and just, just completely transform their lives, teaching them skill sets that are not taught in school. Right? Right. I call those high income skills. So this is my mission. I'll tell you, kid, a very simple thing. The other day, um, someone was interviewing me, which they asked me a pretty profound question. He said, Dan, given where you are today, like, this is actually a good question to ask yourself as well. Given what you're doing today, if you're 10 times more successful, you have 10 times more money, would you still do what you do right now? So That's if you're it. 10 times more successful, if you, you're making 10 times more money, would you still do what you do right now? If the answer is no, that is not your calling, that is not your purpose. If the answer is absolutely yes, then you know you're home. This, right. is, what, this is what you're meant to do. And I asked myself that, the, guest, uh, the, the host asked me that question, I said, absolutely. How do I know? Because I am, compared to where I was making before, and I was already like very successful financially. Yes. And to now next level and next level, right? That I'm still doing what I'm doing. Then I know I'm home. This is, this is my gift. It doesn't matter if today I, you ask me if I make a hundred times more money, would I still do what I do? Would I still create content? Would I still do what I do? I said, absolutely. A hundred percent. No hesitation. No question. Then I know this is what I meant to do. Yeah, that's some, awesome. That's awesome. Right? Dan, yeah. what does the word significance mean to you? In this book, I'll, I'll read you the subtitle, The Master Key to Wealth, Success, and Significance. Uh, I didn't know that was the subtitle. That's the subtitle. So I think in life, we go through four stages. The first stage is what I call survival, right? right. Survival, you and I know, it's, it's paying the bills, right? It's, yes. it's putting, putting food on the table, just, just like surviving, have a roof over our head. Like that's survival, right? Right. And most people, they, they live kind of in this mode, paycheck to paycheck, right? Yeah. Uh, and then the next level is what I call security. Uh -huh. Now, now we're talking about kind of the middle class, right? You do have a roof over your head. Uh, you, you're kind of paying the bills. You may have a little bit of debt. You have a, have a steady job and, and you have maybe a little, little bit of investments, hopefully. Uh, but you also maybe have a little bit of debt, uh, but you, 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 you're secure. Right? You, you, have a, you know a lot of people that are, even in Canada, right? Yeah. They're, they're secure. They have a decent life. It's okay. They might take a couple of vacations a year, but pretty middle class, right? Steady right. life. And that's like majority of the population. And then you have the third level, which is what I call success. Now, when it comes to success, now you don't just have everything you need. You have everything you want. Right. Okay. Now you're not just like driving a car. You're driving the car that you want. A Bentley. Okay. Yeah, Bentley, <laughs> uh, you know, a, 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 a Rolls Royce, a Austin Martin, whatever it is that you like, right? Right. You are not, you're not just living in, in, in a house, you're living at a house, like your dream house. Exactly. Your dream neighborhood. Uh, you, you go on vacation, you're not staying in, in, in like, you know, Motel 6, you're staying in, you know, a nice hotel, right? You know, yes. the, the four star, the five star, right? Now you're living a good life. You, you're successful. When I roll a few money, Bruce, I was level three. Okay. And I thought that was it. That, like I thought that's you thought you, you thought you'd reached it. I thought this is it. Like this is what I, I dream about. Like I have a good life. I, I have a successful business. I have income, like a lot of income coming in, right? Like this, this is cool. Like I buy whatever you want. I'm driving a fancy car, like all this stuff, right? Sure. But I didn't know there was one more step. 
and their significance. Right. And, and I knew this because there was a day at home, one day I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Now I never get depressed. I don't get depressed. I'm always a very optimistic kind of guy, always. That day I woke up, Jenny, my wife now, yeah. next to me. I wake up and suddenly I have tears coming down my, 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 my eyes, coming down my cheek. Mm. And I was freaking Jenny out because Jenny was like, whoa, because she doesn't see me cry a lot. Like right. I'm talking, I don't cry, right? Right. It's, it's like, she's like, whoa, whoa. Like she thought I was maybe, am I sick? Am I like hurt? Like, sure. what's going on? She was like, what, what's happening? And I said to her, you know what? I actually don't know. I don't know why I'm crying. Wow. And, and, and she was like, like, are you hurt? I was like, no, I, I just, I have this, suddenly this feeling, they're just like almost dark depression feeling out of nowhere, like right. just out of nowhere. And I couldn't control my emotions, right? Yes. And was just bawling and she was hugging me. I was bawling and, wow. and she was like freaking out, like what's wrong? Like what's going on? I, said, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I said, no, I can't fucking stop crying. Like just my just tears dropping down. Yeah. I don't know what is going. I couldn't control myself. Wow. And, and from then on, I thought, you know what? That's something within me. You can say, you, you, you could say universe, you could say whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. It's your, your, I think it's your higher self right. was telling me you're meant for more. You could do more that, that this is not it. Right. Right. And, and from then on, I shift my focus. I thought I asked myself the question, when was I the happiest in my life? And guess what, Bruce, when was the happiest? It's when I was teaching martial art back in oh. high school. Way back before all that money and all that success. That was why I was the happiest guys on the planet. When I was the teaching, just impacting people and doing that. I could do that. That, that, was, that was my goal. I opened up a little dojo. Of course. And I said, I, then I fast forward. And I said, you know what? If I could do that all day, if I could build a business around that, that this is what I do all day, every day, what would happen? And I did exactly that. And fast forward, and here we are today, right? Uh, and that's how you transition from success to significance. When you are, significance to me is not about, oh, I'm special, I'm, I'm better. No, 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 significance. I hate to say it, it sounds so cliche, but it is like, what's your legacy? What, right. what, what, what's your impact in the world, right? right? And, and, and for most people, they, I see even friends who are very successful entrepreneurs. Right. They're stuck at success. Right. And they don't they, understand significance. They don't understand significance. They don't understand this. Like this is you get the money, you get the wealth, you get all that stuff. That's all, that's all cool. Like it's fine. But when you get to significance, now you, the question that you get up in the morning, it's, it's not, okay, how, can I, how could I make more money, right? How could I build my little like, thing? You're not focusing on that. You're focusing right. on what, what, can I, what, what gifts, what, what, what talents. Can I bring to the world? How could I impact more people? Like you, you, your focus is completely different. And so from that morning, you changed things. What was the first thing you changed in your life, Dan? I shut down a bunch of my companies. Oh, just like that. Just like that. I sold, either I sold them or I shut them down. Wow. Why? Because I look at those companies. Why am I doing it? Just to make money. Just for the money. Just for money. Like I, I don't want to do that anymore. So I, either, I, I almost like some, some of my partners, I just gave it away. I said, you know, take it. My shit, just take it. I don't want it. Because I said, I, I don't have a passion for this. I, I cannot see myself doing this. So shut down, gave away all that. Like I'm talking from that to like this. Just narrowed that down. Narrowed it like, right down. Narrowed that right down, right? And I, then I started teaching in, in some way, shape or form. And I was teaching at the time I had uh, a Vancouver Entrepreneurs Group, which right. like for, for next to nothing. Really. I just want to teach. Sure. People can come. Pay very little, not a lot of money. They can just come in and learn, right? Yeah. And I just I started getting back into my my kind of my roots, what what I like to do, right? And I don't care because I've already had. I don't care about the money part because I have the money, right? Sure. But I'm gonna do it, right? and I didn't even had a clear, super clear path what that looks like. It's just hey, you know what, Bruce like to play piano. I'm just gonna play some piano. Where yeah. maybe at home at my friend's house. You're not thinking about performing in front of a lot of people. You know what I mean? You're just thinking, I'm going to play some piano because sure. I enjoy doing it. Just I don't care. Because I want to do it. Because I want to do it. 
I don't care. I don't care if I have one audience. I don't care if I have no audience, right? Right. And I just started doing that. And then before you know it, you you're playing the piano, and then you your friends say, "Hey, man, Bruce, this is awesome, man. Can you play at my party, okay? I play at your party, man." Or before you know, hey, can you play at at a, at a big theater? All right, okay, I'll play at a big theater. And before you know it, that's kind of what happens, right? Right. I never expected that, but I think the funny thing is when you focus on significance. You get everything else. Yeah, I think you're right. You Tell me how else. Jenny has helped you with mindfulness, with being grounded in your life. She's she, she's she's well. First of all, she's she's my wife. Yeah, she's my best friend. She is my soulmate. She's my business partner. Um, I tell people all the time, even on social media, I would not I would not be where I'm without Jenny. She keeps me grounded. She she tells me because when you're successful. Sometimes people are afraid to, to tell you things. Sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, I remember. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, when I gave my first TEDx talk. Yes. Okay. At TEDx Danny Park. Yeah. It was in front of twenty six hundred people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six hundred people. I was in my red suit. Right. Yeah. TEDx, and I, I finished my talk. I was the opening speaker, standing ovation, like phenomenal. Yeah. Right. Phenomenal! Like it was, I was like excited. I was hype. I was like mm, on top of the world, right? Yeah, like finally I'm on TEDx, right? So awesome. Went home. Jenny's like, I said, "What? You see that garbage there? Someone's gonna take it out." <laughs> I said, "Are you kidding me? I was just like red suit TEDx." In front of twenty six hundred people, standing ovation. Are you kidding me? Right? Yeah. Take out the cash. I was like, oh fuck. Right. Take out the cash and put it. Right. Yeah. You had to take out the trash. <laughs> it's the same. It's yeah. the same. So she keeps me grounded, a hundred percent. That's so cool. Do you have children? No, yet, not yet, not yet. We've been married only for uh, four years now. We've been together now almost uh, I think twelve, twelve years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, so she keeps me grounded. She tells me stuff that 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 nobody else tells me, uh, and and pretty much any. I always want things by her, right? That's She's so cool. my my sounding board. It's yeah, like some people, and we work together because we don't even like. Of course, as a couple, we 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 like we're together almost twenty four seven all the time for years, right? We travel yeah. together, we go to conferences together, we learn together, we right. go together, uh, everything that we do. So, do you want to be a father? Yes, I do want to be a father. Yeah. Yes, I do want to be a father. But I think it's, now um, we have so much going on that I think maybe in a few years. Well, you know, I didn't become a father until I was almost 40. There and I didn't think I was going to be a father. You know, I was starting to think, oh, okay, this is not going to happen. And then it happened. And I'll tell you, it was an amazing experience. And it still is. My son's 17 now. Mm. And uh, it's just been absolutely phenomenal. I, I believe, I believe you. I've talked to my friends who are, and again, goes back to that significance, right? Yeah. Where, it where it's, but I have that conversation with Jenny too. But in some way, it's so interesting. Although we don't have kids yet, but I feel like I have a lot of kids. I For do sure. really have a lot of kids. Like, like, seriously, like even, yeah. even, even like my, my team, I call them kids. Like yeah. they live in my house. And How many like do you have on your team? Right now on the Dan Lock organization, probably 40 something at this point. Right. Not including, like these are like full-time people. There are 40 somewhat people. I have 20 somewhat people just on the media side. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I want to ask you five quick answer questions, Dan, sure. if that's okay. Sure. The first one is this, who is one person and I can only guess who it is, but one person who has influenced mindfulness in your life. No, it's Jenny. It's no doubt. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Jenny. hundred yeah. percent. Cause she's, she's the one that keeps me grounded. That tells me stuff. And, and yeah, hundred percent. For sure. So how has, uh, how has mindfulness affected your emotions? Mm, I think for mind, again, goes to me, mindfulness equals self-awareness. Right. So when you're self-aware, even when things are not going the way that you want, that 
you don't get too hung up, right? Then your emotional is your emotion is not like ups and downs, right? So I'll give you a perfect example. I know it's a long answer, but I want to give you a perfect example. Where let's say it's martial art, right? You 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 say I want to hit an opponent, and then if this is the way that I want it, I'm gonna hit uh, the the hit the head, right? I'm I'm throwing a punch. And when this happens, if we're so fixated that I'm going to do it exactly my way, I'm going to arrive, you know, my destination, my target, exactly the way I want it. Well, what if the guy put up his hand? What if he blocks? What if he this and whatever, right? Then can you, can you, can you be able to pivot, right? Can you do stuff like that? So uh, it's being able to focus, but letting the need, the need to control. Cool. Which cool. you realize you have no control whatsoever. Yeah. Like in human beings, we actually have very little control over anything. Right. Even we though we think we do and we think we want it, right? We don't. And and you need to, and to be okay with that. Yeah. Because when you're okay with that, your emotions like, okay. I'm For okay sure. With, right? It's okay. So tell us how breathing is part of your mindfulness practice. Uh, when I meditate, of course, I meditate now a couple, two, three times, once every two, three days. I should go back to every day. I really should go back to every day. Um, that breathing, which is to, to empty your mind and your breathing and just, you just focus on your, your breathing. Right. Right. And just that. So that to me, it's because of my martial art training and it's a, it's a big part of, of what I do. Right. Even when you're speaking, when you're communicating, um, breathing, using your voice, right. Uh, projecting from a diaphragm, it's just a big part of what we do. hundred percent. Your, your book unlock it is mm -hmm. awesome and uh you know mindful tribe get that book check it out on amazon or go to danlock.com it's l-o-k danlock.com and check it out but do you have any other books you would recommend that could be related to mindfulness dan i think i think this is the deepest book I, I i i could write in terms of mindfulness but just because the other book i wrote they're they're marketing their sales they're they are their business. They are they are tactical, right? Right. That I I I wasn't deep enough to write a book like this. Right. I didn't have and I didn't have enough depth back then. I was twenty someone years old. Yeah. How much depth could you have at twenty someone years old? Right. Sure. I'm a little bit older. That uh, this is this is really the the book that I'm I'm, I'm most proud of, hundred percent. So I would say, yeah, this book. Are there any apps? that you use like to meditate or to stay grounded or to be focused? What do you use? None of them. None of them. Okay. I don't use app. Like my, my, my cell phone has so like, so few apps. It's crazy. Oh yeah. I, I'm trying to I, like think about, I know a lot of people use different app meditation app and it works for you. Great. Uh, I believe in simplicity. Yeah. I believe in like, you don't like the less fancier, the better. Like people ask me, Oh, you know, what do you do to, to, to like set goals and, and what's your app that you use? You know what? I say good old paper and pen. Sure. My little journal, like that works perfectly fine for me. I don't, nothing fancy. I, I like to keep it very simple. So no zero, just you, you want to meditate. If you can focus, you can go in that boom. I don't need to put on something. I don't need, I don't need to know that. So I want to simplify even my manage my day-to-day -day life. I feel a few apps because I think the more apps you have, you, when you're striving for efficiency, it's not about efficiency. It's about simplicity and simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Yes. Yeah. I like that. I like that quote, Dan. Mm. Yeah. That's great. What's the first thing you do when you get up? What's your morning routine? Like I listen to my attitude gratitude which is on YouTube is free, but I type in download added to gratitude. You, you can listen to it. So right. that's a, a, a voice a audio that I did for myself every day, focus on what I'm grateful for before I do anything else. Right. right? I want to put myself in that state. Uh, and then the same thing, you know, brush, you know, shower. Uh, and then I drink lots of water in the morning. I don't drink coffee right now. I drink my green tea. I don't drink my green tea. Right. Uh, and from there, uh, before, and sometimes I usually in the morning, I, I like to do yoga and just stretch. Right and do like stretching and you know all that stuff. Uh, so that's like a good full hour almost before I do anything else. I don't let's like, see the, the Bruce the most difficult thing to do in the morning for most people. Yeah. Oh, they get on their phones before you do anything. You go touch that phone right. and you open up your email, your your social media, all that. Like then you get sucked into 
like this whole world problem. Yeah, you do. You do get sucked into it. Yeah, like before you know, oh my god, like I'm I'm like you know two hours in, I haven't done anything. So no, I don't I don't do any of that. Like that's the first hour, and that's I think probably the best advice I could give to people. Give it to yourself. That's that's your, your that's your me time, right? Give Definitely. give your body like feel your body with water, hydrate, mind, uh, focus, clarity before you do anything. Before you jump into email, before you jump on the phone call, the meeting, and all that stuff like that. One. The funny thing is, you could see where we we are so much on social media. I'm actually not on social media a lot. No, no, yeah. I'm not on social media a lot. Because so you just create the content and you get somebody else to put it on social media. Is that kind I've of got it? A whole team, whole team that takes care of that, right? Sure. Um, the only social media I check from I check it's the uh, private Facebook group that I have for for my students because yeah. I want to see see their progress. Um, I do that. Uh, we have a, a a Telegram chat with with my team, but I feel like if so much going on in order to me for the to be the leader and visionary, I need to have clarity. I cannot be bombarded with stuff, right? So a lot of stuff like my team goes through so many messages every day, but I filter a lot of it. So I just focus on what I do, my my brilliance, right? My my, my right. zone of Yes, the few things that I'm good at, and I just do that. So, like they look at us, like, "Wow, we got such a so." Like, I'm not the kind of guy who's like on social media. I'm checking. I'm calm. Like, all I, I don't do that. No, no. And how do you react to haters? Are there ever any haters that really kind of get to you? I have so many haters. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of freaking haters, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. The way I see it, I think at first they they bother me. At first, yes. when I was just putting my message out there. That's because, you know, I'm direct, yeah, right? I'm, I know I, that. I, 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 I provoke people, right? Sure. Uh, and sometimes the truth hurts. People don't like that. So at first it bothers me because I was getting a lot of uh, comments where it's like a, reminds me of the bully like in, in high school. Because a lot of comments is like, uh, very racist kind of comment. Yes. Right. Like, I mean, you know, I look like Psy, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, you know, I, I, they make fun of my hair, uh, <laughs> make fun of my accent and they yeah. make fun of like, whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, I get a lot of those and, and then people say it's just, just nasty things for no yeah. reason. Yeah. Um, and I actually have people who, who made up stuff to attack me, right? Oh, yeah. I can oh, yeah, believe yeah. it. I, I have that. And I, now we are like get to a point where I have, like, I'll give you a perfect example. Like this I'm talking about, I'm dealing with almost on a, on a daily basis. I've got a whole legal team and do all that. Sure. Like we have people who set up fake social media accounts pretending to be me. Oh, wow. Uh, almost every week. We got to shut it down almost every week. Instagram, Facebook. We shut it down constantly, right? Crazy. Uh, we have people, I got people who pretend to be, use my photo, use everything pretend to be me giving people like stock advice, what stocks to buy when I don't even invest in stocks, right? Oh, right. Yeah, they, they, we, we have that happening, but that's part of it, right? That's all part of when, you, when you're impacting a lot of people, it sure. comes with territory. So um, at first it bothers me, now it really, it really doesn't because you, when you get so many of them, you just kind of, you get used to and and most of most of the time I do know um, I think I have enough understanding of human beings that when people listen let's say when people listen to you when people listen to me when they watch a video when they listen to podcasts they are not actually listening to what we say you know that right 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 they are not listening to what we say they are listening to what they want to hear they are sure. listening to 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 what made up stories they have in their mind which is kind of like a filter. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's kind of like a filter, and, and they listen to whatever they want to listen. They, they they hear. No, I don't agree with that. You can see that. Oh, that's so wrong and stuff. It has nothing to do with they're wrong. It just that's what not what they believe in, right? That's the, it contradicts what they believe in, or it challenged the, their their existing belief, right? So nowadays, I look at that. It's like mm. think. I mean, if we, we if I impact a million people, you get ten percent of people hating you. That's a hundred thousand people. That's so, a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. So I'll reach at this point. It's about in terms of social media combined on a weekly basis. I'm talking about exposure. 
like yeah. views and stuff. It's about 10 million per week. Wow. That's a so lot that's, of people. That's, all, that's about 40 million per month, right? Yes. Uh, and by the end of this year, probably just be 100 million per month. So 10% of that's a lot of people. Yeah, it's a ton of people. <laughs> it's, yep. a ton, it's, it's just like whole, like half of Canada right there. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then I'm like, you know, do I want to spend my time focusing on that or do I want to focus on the people that I see that I've impacted them? They walk up to me on, on the street and thanking me that, that I've helped them impact them in some way. You know what? If I focus on significance, I cannot do what I do if I focus on haters. Of course not. Yeah. It just, I just not. cannot do what I do. So I spent yeah. all my time just focusing on the people that I impact. And, and yeah. I, it's, I almost have this mind. I, that's mine. The mindfulness that, that I've just blocked it out. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me like zero. No. Now, now it's zero at all. Like it does. I laugh sometimes. I see some funny stuff. Yeah. I see some funny stuff sometimes. You yes. focus on significance instead. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? If, if two people say certain things about me, oh, and then I, it bothers me. It robs my creativity. It, it robs my motivation. What good does that do? What's the funniest thing that you heard in the last, last week or two that somebody did? Yeah. Right. So it's, it's the say again. I said, what's the funniest thing that somebody said in the last couple of weeks that made you really laugh? Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to think there's so many, uh, in, in common, I'm just thinking everything. I think in, in, on YouTube, I do get comments. Yeah. Where, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. I can't think of any because you see, yeah. I see my mind just blocks it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's I, good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's my awesome. mind just like I read, I just forget about it. But there are a lot. Yeah. Like you go to YouTube, there's some funny stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some some funny stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, but I I am grateful because on 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 let's say on my YouTube channel, you notice compared to other influencers, my my percentage like compared like you look at most influencers, they might have a sixty percent people like liking them and forty percent hating them. Right. Sure. Like, that it's very normal, right? Or even like this kind of ratio. Like sure. mine, I track as we look, like it's like 96% positive. Hmm. And then 4% negative. Like I'm like, whoa, this is, this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy uh, uh, that we have that many fans who support what we do. And I think partially it's because, like just like even the book, it, it's even my haters. The funny thing is even my haters, Bruce, how much they hate, like I have haters who comment every single video that I do. Wow. Like every single time, like I reached the uh, morning in the video on YouTube, 9 a.m. Yeah. Minutes. S hateful comment from the like, same group of people. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's like, well, you don't have to watch my stuff. No, exactly. But like they they're... watch your stuff. Yeah. So, so that makes you a fan. Yeah, they're they're really not haters. They're fans, but they, they just don't fans. know how to express themselves. It's like so funny, right? I'm that like, is funny. It, it's like they can't they can't resist, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I find that interesting. That uh, is, it's very very. They spend that much time, and I say, you know, if they spend that much time hating someone, why not go do something? Yeah, right. Uh, where, take action. Take action. Where and I tell them sometimes I challenge them too, right? Where well, if you're gonna make, a, if you're gonna criticize, let's say a video, how about you make a video, you upload to YouTube? Of course. Yeah, just you do it, right? Yeah. And, and and I think everybody goes through different journey, so I I really like, I don't pay attention to that. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it's been great talking to you. It's just so so cool to to see that you're so personable and so easy <laughs> to talk to and so much yeah. fun to talk to. Yeah, so it's, it's just me, right? It's yeah, really it's just like, you. What you see, it's just, it's just me. Really, it's not. Yeah. Like it's doesn't matter. Like the 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 business that I have, the 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 organization that I have, and, and all of that. You know, the success, the the wealth. I, I to those things to me nowadays is actually the the success means a lot less to me. Right. Because when you have it, it's like you know when you have it, it's like you know people talk about the Bentley. I don't even think about the Bentley. Like I don't. It just to me, it's just a car. Right. Sure. Right. I, it's not like oh, it's it's. I get it, but it's a car. Right? Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't. I don't get like it's not like I, every if I'm driving, I don't drive that much. But if I get on it, um, 
I, I was like, oh, it, oh, it's so great. And, and look, the, yeah, uh, like it's, it doesn't, I don't even think about it. I just don't right. think about it. Right. It's just what's comfortable. That's all. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been great talking to you and Mindful Tribe. Check out danlock.com, L O K, danlock.com. And definitely grab that book, Unlock It. Because yeah, unlock that it. Is uh, you can awesome. go to unlockitbook.com if you want to go okay. directly to the book page. They can, they can pre order. And by the way, if you pre order, I actually have a couple classes that I did just for the book purchasers. Um, they will get access to that as well, which I kind of. Kind of like a, a book club that I go more in depth about different lessons that was not covered in the book that I just go into it. But this this is my best work. I, oh, I'm that's awesome. Very proud. I'm very, very proud. So unlockitbook.com. Check it out there. Get some bonuses. Dan, it's been great. Thanks a million for being on Mindfulness Mode. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You make it so easy. And I'm glad we could connect. And back in 2005... Uh, to where you are today, how where how we have both grown so much, yeah, right? we have, uh, and, and from who we were before and now who you are today, uh, and I think that's the one thing I want anyone watching this, listening to this, to to get away, to to take a take away, to walk away with, and that is, doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter where you came from, doesn't matter you got bullied, doesn't matter if you couldn't speak a word of English, doesn't matter if you come from a dysfunctional family, doesn't matter if you're a punk kid when you were you were young. If you have the desire, you have the, 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 the right mind, you could, change. you could change. Definitely. Thank you, Dan. Thank, Thank you. you for those Appreciate words it. of wisdom. Bye no, now. Thank you.